Hello, hello, hello. It's Velvet Al watches movies so you don't have to. Here with the second installment of the Indian remakes of Baby's Day Out trilogy. Like, seriously. It still boggles my mind that they've made three remakes of Baby's Day Out. But um, the first one was a slight improvement over the original just because there was some song and dance numbers and a lot of action fight scenes. Um, I'm guessing this one's go also going to have song and dance numbers. I don't know as far as like action scenes, how it'll go. This is the second Baby's Day remake called, and I will butcher the pronunciation, Ek Pool Teen Kante, which according to Wikipedia, this film's in Hindu. So, yeah, I don't really know what I can say more with the introduction, but, so let's just get on with it and see how many nut shots they have this time. So the film starts off with a montage of what I assume are scenes that are going to happen in the film. Um, so I guess some spoiler alerts going on, but the most significant to me, anyhow, is a shack gets blown up. Which is just fucking awesome. <laughs> Neither the American version or the first Indian remake had explosions in it. So I am already fucking psyched for this. And the other thing that is making me even super more fucking excited is that there's a monkey. A real one. It's not like a guy in a gorilla suit. Um, I think it might be a baboon it kind of looks like. I'm not like fully sure. It's kind of got a red face. But... The credits credit him as Raja the monkey. So we're just going to say he's a monkey. And I won't feel bad about mislabeling what sort of actual uh, creature he is. So we'll just go with monkey because this film is telling me he's a monkey. And if not, that's cultural appropriation or something. Or, you know, bad casting. It's monkey washing. <laughs> if they got an... Got a monkey to play some other sort of ape. That's monkey washing. But I'm excited because it's a real fucking monkey and not a guy in a suit. Okay, the film cuts straight to the chase. Baby is already kidnapped at the beginning of this film. And the parents are waiting around with the police. Who again also look like military guys. So yeah, I guess that must just be the way it is in India. That the police look like military guys. And I'm talking about, like, you know, the generals and shit. Not, like, the so regular soldiers. Not the grunt guys. But, like, the generals. And, you know, they get a call from the kidnapper. And there's four of them. So, I... It's not so much going to be the Three Stooges of the previous films. As more the Ted Healy and his Stooges. Obscure reference. Look that up. It's true. Before the Three Stooges... Mo was not the leader, he was just another stooge, and there was Ted Healy, he was the leader. Look up your film history. Fascinating stuff. And holy fuck! I I'm throwing the holy fuck because I just paused at the holy fuck moment, but I gotta go through what leads to the holy fuck moment. So, and I think I forgot to mention, Baby in this film, he looks like he's five. So... He's kind of more annoying than just a regular baby, I think. Because he's just crying the whole time. And you're five. I don't care how scary this situation you're in is. Fucking suck it up and be a man. And so, I think maybe this is the military. Because, like, 50, at least 50 guys with fucking rifles come charging at this shack. Which, I don't know how they even knew that this shack was where the kidnappers were. And... I know where, I know you already probably see where I'm going with since I mentioned earlier that, you know, in the opening credits they show a shack being blown up. So yes, after a big massive gunfight. And you know, if you had told me that there was a remake of Baby's Day Out that included a major gun shootout in the first ten minutes, I'd be like, Are you fucking on crack or something? But the geniuses behind 
Ekpool Ten Kante, or however it's pronounced. I wish I knew how it's actually pronounced, because I feel this film deserves that respect of me pronouncing it correctly. But yeah, the fucking geniuses behind this remake decided, let's open up with a massive shootout scene. And then, yes, we get the shack blown up. And here's why it's a holy fuck moment. Baby was in the fucking shack. What the fuck? Did they really just blow him up? So I'm guessing maybe we're going to see these kidnappers kidnap another baby. And so we were just given like a fake out and thinking, oh, okay, this is the baby that was kidnapped and it's going to go on all these wacky adventures. Holy fuck. I am now like so fucking super excited for this film because what kind of fucking dangerous shit are they going to put baby through if they've already blown up one now we get to trial for the kidnappers and the defense attorney is just going ape shit and just yelling and i don't know what possibly his defense could be because remember the kidnappers they fucking blew up a young child what defense is there your honor he's innocent even though everyone clearly saw him push the button, push the detonator that blew up the shed that a young child was in. But I guess he's arguing that his client is a heart patient, and I only know this because for some reason he says it in English. Like, I don't know. Is there something with, like, the Hindi language where there are certain things, like, they don't have... A translation for so they have to go with English um, is it just kind of like Spanglish where like you kind of just throw some certain phrases because there was some of that going on in the other Babies Day remake as well where they just would occasionally just kind of throw like an English phrase or something and it just kind of would always throw me off it's it just seems weird but I don't know if there are any Indian listeners of my podcast which I might get some Indian listeners who are YouTubing for these Baby Day Out remakes. But um, send me a message, either on the YouTube video or velvetowl at hotmail.com, and let me know, is this like a common thing of just kind of throwing English phrases occasionally into speaking? I am just genuinely curious about that. But the judge seems to you know, not side with the defense attorney. Good job. He hands down his ruling, which I don't know because he didn't use any English. But I'm hoping it's like life in prison or the death sentence because, once again, he blew up a fucking child. That is just... And I'm confused. Is this going to be a fucking comedy? (laughs) Like... Because if it is, this is fucking insane, and I kind of love it that... I mean, I don't love that a child was killed, but considering it's a movie and, you know, the child wasn't actually killed, I can love the fact that there's a Baby's Day remake that killed a child in an explosion in the first ten minutes. My God, Hollywood. Hollywood, if you ever fucking remake Baby's Day out... I will not stand for it unless a child is murdered in the first 10 minutes. Um, so I'm guessing at some point this is going to turn into lighthearted comedy, right? Then we take our hard turn into lighthearted comedy, as I predicted there would be. And we get who I think are going to be the mom and dad of the main baby. And dad's trying to wake up mom and she doesn't want to get up. And then she opens her eyes and gets scared because there's a cockroach. I don't know why there's a cockroach on her. I don't know if Dad, like, planted it on her to help wake her up. But there was a cockroach, and she yelled, and then they lightheartedly throw barbs back and forth. And, you know, it's kind of like a screwball romantic comedy, I think. I don't know what what either of them are saying, so I don't know. I think it's something loving. And apparently mom forgot something because she does the whole, like, slap her head like, oh, no. 
Then we're in the classroom. Teacher's taking roll call. Seems like everyone's there. But as soon as he turns to put his name on the board, everyone disappears. So I don't know if... Was it the end of class? Or just... Everyone decide, fuck this, I'm out of here. Like, he, it was one of those, like, gags of... He writes his name aboard, turns around, everyone's gone, no one's in sight. Waka, waka, waka. And... Where was I? <laughs> so, a bunch of the high school girls, they're at the cafeteria and they're flirting with the cashier or whoever it is. Seems like it, again... I mean, I feel like I need to constantly repeat this, even though you probably realize it. I don't know what anyone is saying, so I'm kind of just trying to figure this out. But I'm guessing they're flirting with him so that they can then steal soda. Um, great product placement by Pepsi. It is fucking everywhere, um, which may just be the way it is in India. But I always thought Coca-Cola had the bigger presence overseas and in every sort of like nation so great product placement by pepsi makes me want to go drink a coke and then the fat girl from the group she's got like eight plates stacked high and she's walking back over to the lunch table when this guy like bumps into her and she drops all the plates and all her food goes everywhere so she's very upset because she's fat and I'm not trying to fat shame. I'm not being trying to denigrate anyone. I'm just explaining the logic of the film. She's fat. Her food dropped. She's mad. And so she's very mad because she fucking chokes this guy out and drags him over to her friends, who I'm guessing they're like the mean girls of school because there's all this yelling and they pick his pockets. Like, they're just like, fuck you. They take his wallet and take his money, and then they all drag him to the bathroom, and not in the good way, because they strip him down to skivvies. Um, I don't know why they couldn't have just done that in the cafeteria, but and this guy is fucking hairy. So I don't know if this is supposed to be a high school or college, but everyone's really fucking hairy. So we're going to say college. We'll, we'll just go with that. You know, I mean, that happens in American films, too, where everyone in the so-called high school looks like they're in their 30s. Mr. Jason Priestley and Mr. Luke Perry. Mr. Henry Winkler. Mr. I look way too fucking old to be playing this role. Um, yeah, they're the Mean Girls. Why, why did they strip them? I mean, it was an honest accident, you know. I can even understand taking the money to pay for the food that got ruined. Just strip him down to his skivvies where everyone can see his glorious chest hair. That, that just wasn't nice. So the guy that gets stripped down, he then goes running to his friends and he's all upset and that makes them upset. And he's got like, it's a fucking gang of like 10 people or something. And I'm not sure what they're saying, but then suddenly... Indian Fonz comes on the scene, like, in his on his motorcycle leather jacket. Everyone's looking at him. Um, this one girl who I think was one of the mean girls, I'm not sure. Because she doesn't have the other mean girls around her. And she seems upset by him. And then, of course, because it's an Indian film, song and dance number. Which... The girl goes to try to slap him, but he holds her hand and starts singing and dancing. And it's a cool song. Although the chorus, the melody is just so obviously ripped off of Thelma Houston's Baby Don't Leave Me This Way, or whatever the song is called. Like, baby, my heart is full of love for you. Seriously, just fucking shamelessly. I'm surprised I even figured it out because it was driving me crazy for a while i'm like where do i know this song from and like <laughs> and somehow i was able to google it and found it it's thelma houston baby but 
you know, in Indian lyrics. So it might even just be they're singing Don't Leave Me and they're doing it in Indian lyrics because I don't know what they're saying. But the melody is very clearly that song. I gotta say, I really dig the choreography on this. And the song, it's just a fucking catchy song. Because, yeah, whatever I've... You, you can see why I did not forge a career in singing. But it's kind of crazy because he keeps grabbing the girl by the shoulder and shaking her, like, super violently. Like, just super, super violently. Like, if, he, if she were a baby, she'd be dead. Yeah, I went there. You know what? Fuck you! Fuck you, film. I can go dark because you're the one that killed a fucking child by explosion in the first ten minutes. So, maybe violence is part of the ra mating ritual over in India. Or in Bollywood films. Or just... Maybe whoever, like, watched Baby's Day Out had an aneurysm because, you know, they're trying to write a script based on it. They're like, what the fuck is this film? I want to kill babies now because of it. Then at home, the girl, she's all, like, upset because she just fucking hates Indian Fonz, which I don't blame her. He's, he's much too aggressive. And so she's throwing dishes at a picture of him. But not a picture picture, it's like a drawing of him that's like laughing at her. And there's all these dishes keep coming because dad is right there behind her. Just keep giving her dishes because he's, he's a very good dad and understands, you know, she's got to get this anger out. And if that requires destroying their entire china cabinet and all their dishes, then so be it. And this is the people from earlier so just to give you a sense of me not being able, either not being able to tell the difference in ages or just, you know, everyone's looks really old. But it, I thought they were like married. I thought they were the mom and dad. But apparently she's the daughter, not his wife. Or maybe his, it is his wife and they got kind of like that kinky call me daddy type of vibe. I am beginning to wonder, though, is this really a Baby's Day Out remake? Um, because where's the baby? We haven't seen a baby yet. Unless she's the one that gets kidnapped, because I guess she's kind of baby, maybe, and gets into wacky adventures. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is Are we going to lead anywhere towards being, like, the Baby's Day Out plot? Or is it just... They hired a screenwriter, they told them, watch Baby's Day Out, and write a script based on it. And the screenwriter was just like, what the fuck is this bullshit? Fuck that, I'm killing the baby in the first ten minutes, and going off in my own direction. Which is exactly what the director of the original Baby's Day Out should have done when he saw the script. They're like, what the fuck is this bullshit, I'm killing that baby in ten minutes, and then I'm out of here. Now, Indian Fonz, or maybe it's another guy in a motorcycle. Someone's riding their motorcycle. I'm going to say it's Indian Fonz, even though he's not wearing his leather jacket. But I refuse to believe anyone but Indian Fonz is riding a motorcycle. Aside from his friends that also are riding motorcycles. But he's riding his motorcycle to campus or something. When it falls over, because he trips or something, someone tripped it, and he falls off. And then suddenly a bunch of guys just come out of the woodworks to try to beat the shit out of him. Because, I don't know, they're angry at him for something. Who knows? But they don't realize just how much of an ass-kicker Indian Fonz is. And he just kicks their asses instead, and we just get another, like... We get a big, massive, like, kung fu fight scene. In the rain, nonetheless. So, there's lots of mud, and everyone's shirt is just all wet and clingy. And this is just fucking awesome. Seriously, so far, we're like 25 minutes into this film, and I love every fucking thing about it. I love this film as much as I hated Baby's Day Out. 
please, rest the film. Do not ruin this. Do not fall into the trap of then following the Baby's Day Out plot. I don't even care anymore. You don't have to do anything like Baby's Day Out. Please just continue to be this fucking awesome film that you are. And I will consider that you are a Baby's Day Out remake, even though you have, like, so far nothing in common with that film. But you're so much fucking awesomeness. I love this film. You know what? I am going to go on, like, a study course, like, Babel or whatever those fucking, like, whatever those programs are. What is it? Rosetta. The Rosetta Stone to learn Hindi so I can rewatch this film and find out what the fuck these people are saying. Because this is so far so fucking awesome. And then the girl that was mad at Indian Fonz that may or may not have been part of the Mean Girls group, she comes waltzing into school. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, the fight stopped when the principal, like, just yelled at them to stop it. And this principal, I guess, like, can control his students pretty well because they all fucking stopped. There was, like, 30 people fighting, and they all stopped. Even the guy who was about to throw Pepsi bottles because, again... The fucking product placement with Pepsi. I don't know if I love it or hate it. Um, not as much as the random Cobra poster in the other film, but this is just... Anyhow, the girl, she comes, she's dressed up like 80s era Madonna, and it's just fucking hot. I, I will say it. I Yeah, okay. Because I'm going to allow myself one... Per every episode from now on. Oh yeah. Seriously, she is looking hot. And then she comes and she yells at Indian Fonz some stuff. And then she says, in English, you understand? And ironic, because I don't fucking understand any of that that you just said. Except the English. And who knows, maybe he understood everything but the English part. Just... Seriously, what is up with that? That's just these random, like, English phrases. Like, for a while, I was watching, like, foreign movies because I wanted to be, like, a film snob and shit like that and pretend, like, oh, I love glorious cinema and all that, so I have to watch foreign films, unlike the shallow American films. And I don't think in any of the foreign films I've seen, I've heard as much random English as in this film. And the Mean Girls, who I'm not even entirely sure are the same Mean Girls from earlier in the film. The one, the daddy's daughter, I mean, she's the same, but her sidekicks, I don't remember. And she's definitely not the one that was dressed like Madonna five minutes ago, so I don't know. I'm, I'm not keeping good track of who's who in this film. But they devise some evil plan, and it's the day of a dirt bike race, or a motorcycle race. I'm not sure if these really qualify as motorcycles or dirt bikes, or maybe a mix of both. And so it's the big race, in the rain, kind of. The rain seems to come and go a lot in this film. And Indian Fonz, he's taken a, a lead, massive lead, and so he's driving, but suddenly... The arrow pointing where the course goes turns into a different direction. And he goes in that direction. And as he leaves, it turns back to the regular route direction. Because, oh no, it's a plot. It's a plan to take him out. And he's driving. There's suddenly like a big like rope in the road that takes him out. And he goes flying. And the mean girls pop out. And they're laughing like, ha ha ha, we got him good. Then suddenly, this car like... A Volkswagen bug pulls up, and these guys just jump out with guns and big knives. And I don't know if they're going to kidnap the girls or rob them or what they're planning to do. But luckily, Indian Fonz jumps back up because he fucking survived that shit with no problem and just kicks the shit out of these guys. Like, just full-on, like, awesome kung fu moves or karate moves, some sort of martial arts moves. I go with Kung Fu because it just has a good cadence. Better than karate. Kung Fu. 
And then I just can't pronounce any of the other kind of martial arts. So we're just going to go with Kung Fu. Everyone was Kung Fu fighting. This Indian Fonz is just like the fucking awesomest. And he kicks one guy and he goes right through the car window, landing inside the car, which I don't see too often. Usually people like go flying out through the car window, not in, whatever. I just like it. If you remember all the way back to my episode on Kickboxer 4, I love it when someone gets kicked and they fly through a window. It is like one of my favorite things right behind like just random boobs. Like if if a film just combined the two, like a topless girl kicking someone in the face and they go flying through a window, that will be the fucking greatest movie scene ever. If any of you out there know of a movie with that scene in, let me know, because I need to see it. But the point is, he just fucking kicks ass. Again, this is the fucking greatest movie, and I'm not sure. I don't know if I hit on the wrong movie. Like, this might not be the Baby's Day Out remake. (laughs) So far, there's fucking nothing to suggest it is. But it's so much better than... Baby's Day Out. It's brilliant. I don't even know if maybe I accidentally like started watching a film because I had to back out of it. Maybe I backed when I went to play it again. I just clicked on the wrong film or something. Because this doesn't even seem to have anything to do with the first 10 minutes. I don't know. I mean, maybe these random guys from the car were part of like the big like cartel or whatever that blew up that fucking baby in the first 10 minutes. I just... I love this film. This fuck Citizen Kane and the piano and whatever other films that you may think are among the greatest films ever made. No. Ek Pool Teen Kante. Which again, I'm not sure if that's the proper pronunciation. That is the greatest fucking film ever made. Over at the prison, the head of the gang, um, I think it's the guy who fucking, if I can remind you, blew up a fucking young child. He's living a pretty good life in the prison cell. Uh, He's got TV and cigarettes and some other stuff. But unfortunately, some of the guards come by and they're like, fuck you, your good times are over, we're confiscating all this shit. I'm like, oh no. So, head guy... Um, who I'm going to call Indian Ted Healy, because, again, he's got his Indian Three Stooges. No, seriously, look up Ted Healy. If nothing else from my podcast, learn a little bit about film history. So he goes to the warden, and I'm not sure what they say, but it looks like the warden agrees with him. So the warden leads him to go over to see the Indian Three Stooges, who, they actually have to wear prison uniforms. Uh, close to, like, the prison uniforms in the other Baby's Day Out remake. Whereas Te- Indian Ted Healy, he gets to dress in regular clothes. And there's a lot of talking and quiet yelling and stuff is said. And hopefully I can figure out what's going on. But I think, you know, the Indian Three Stooges were going to finally get back on course towards being Baby Stay Out. Because I think they're probably going to be the ones that kidnap Baby. Who's Baby? I don't know. Because we haven't seen a fucking Baby except for that little kid that got blown up. I will not stop reminding you that this film started with a young child getting blown up. And it's a comedy. And Head Mean Girl decides that, you know, she really does love Indian Fonz. So she's going to try to win him over and make him realize that he should love her too. So, you know, she does all those things to accidentally bump into him on purpose. Um, or does it sound better to say bump into him accidentally on purpose? You get my idea. You know, he she manages to fall into his arms or... Jump into the pool after him, because he's swimming in a Speedo. But, you know, he just is having none of it. Because she's a mean bitch. 
He hasn't forgotten, although he did shake her violently at one point. So, you know, I think it's a wash. You both were kind of assholes to each other, so do a fresh start. But he's not having it, so Mean Girl asks her nerdy little friend for some advice. And nerdy little friend is drinking Coca-Cola. She's got a Coke bottle, which, how did they sneak that in when obviously this film has been so heavy on Pepsi promotion? Like, did Pepsi notice that and be like, what the fuck? We gave you all this money to put our product in your film and you snuck a Coca-Cola bottle in? And I'm not entirely sure, but I think the other girl might have been drinking RC Cola. Which I think is an even more awesome, like, sneak-in move. They probably just brought the bottles from home. And so, um, she asks for help, and her friend gives her some pills. Seriously. And I think they're supposed to make you fall in love with a person. And they try it out on their fat friend, who takes some pill, who drinks the Coke or Pepsi, not knowing that there's these pills in them, drinks them, and falls in love with this guy that just randomly walked by. So, I guess the plan is to fucking roofie Indian Fonz. Man, the 90s were such a different time where we could just joke about date rape, I guess. Just, because that's what it is. I'm sorry, but you're fucking putting pills into his drink so that you could have your way with him? That is fucking date rape. And once again, a remake of Baby's Day Out. We're going to get date rape, kung fu fights, and a baby or young child getting blown up. And still, we are nowhere near a plot resembling Baby's Day Out. And I'd say that's for the best. Now, Mean Girl's on a date with Indian Fonz. Just they don't really tell us how she managed, because last time we saw the two of them together, he was laughing in her face and dumping her in a pool because he didn't really care for her. But somehow, they're on a date. It's a romantic date. And then we get a romantic musical number it's just the two of them so we don't get like any of the crazy choreography of the earlier song and it doesn't rip off any disco song that i know of but then it starts raining because in this film it just kind of randomly rains and they build a fire to stay warm um i would think that they wouldn't really need to stay warm had he kept his shirt on he took his shirt off, so, you know, that that might be the reason you're cold. If you can't stay warm, like fucking Tonga dude at the Winter Olympics, he went out there shirtless, and did you see him complain and need to keep warm? No, because he's fucking Tonga dude. And so then there's the implication that they have sex. I don't know if he was roofied or not, so I don't know whether I should be okay with them fucking. For all I know, they didn't actually fuck, they just fell asleep next to each other. But if they did fuck, please, I hope you did not roofie his drink with those magic love pills. I'm guessing they fucked, because she is happy in the way that only someone who got a deep dicking is happy. Yeah, she got some fucking deep dick inside of her. And so she's fucking ecstatic about it. So happy that she made breakfast for daddy. And daddy's happy because she's happy. And they talk about something. About how wonderful the world is. And their hopes and dreams, I think. And I don't know. Maybe she was telling them about how good that dick was. Because Indian Fonz has some fucking good dick. And then Indian Fonz goes to his dad, and I'm not sure if she's mom or grandma. She seems pretty old, so I'm going to go with grandma. And I think he's, like, just talking about how great that mean girl's pussy was. I I don't know. I think he's kind of that crass to be talking to his dad like that. Be like, yeah, she had some fucking good pussy. And... 
Grandma goes to the Indian temple to pray or something, and the monkey's there. The red-faced monkey is there, and he's kind of praying too. And I'm not sure what either one of them praying for. And then I was kind of thrown for a loop because on the temple wall, there's a swastika. And then I remembered, like, okay, that is actually originally an Indian symbol. And it's not, like, at 45 degrees angle. So it is, like, the peace symbol, not the fucking Nazi symbol. Then Mean Girl is at school telling all her friends about the good dick that she had. When suddenly, Indian Fonz comes, and she goes running to him, and they do a big, like, well, not, like, super big, just more, like, super fucking long song number. Very romantic song, and they dance, and they're in different locales, and they're in a castle, and on the mountainside, and all that. And then soon, they get married, and then they fuck on their honeymoon, and then they have a baby, and the baby grows to be about five and you know i was thinking okay maybe this is just like a fantasy sequence of like what they want their life to be but it looks like no that we just fucking spent an hour on backstory for baby's day out and this is probably the baby that gets kidnapped and i can't tell if this is the same baby from the beginning of the film which i don't know are we just now going to be leading up to this baby getting fucking killed? Or do we have a hope for a happy ending on this child? Is this child going to survive? We don't know. I don't know. This this actually has like me now invested in the kidnapping of this child wanting to know is he going to be the one, is he the kid that gets blown up or not? Or, you know, is it a second kid that gets blown up? I don't know. What will happen? Mean Girl's dad is playing with his grandson and having a lot of fun when suddenly this guy with a beard. I don't know why I feel the need to specify he has a beard. I just feel like that makes him seem more important and more sinister. He grabs the child and there's a lot of words like yelled back and forth. And, you know, it's serious because granddad yells at him in English. Get out of here and never come back. Which again, is it like something that like they start just speaking in English to emphasize a point? So then we're back at the trial and the guy that was holding the baby is standing by the side of Indian Ted Healy. So I don't know if he's like a lawyer or something. I think it might be his lawyer. Someone important involved with him. So I don't know why he would be going after the baby is this part of some sort of i don't know i'm so confused because i don't know what anyone is saying at this point so this plot is starting to thicken and just go into weird places but the judge did something and indian ted healy is not happy because now he's yelling at his lawyer so indian ted healy goes to the indian stooges and tells them of his plan to kidnap baby um i don't know i mean is mean girl's dad someone important i guess that like this particular baby has to be kidnapped for ransom or something or is it just a randomly chosen baby i don't know but luckily the stooges are gonna be leaving prison like the next day which is probably why they were told of the plan So I don't even know if they originally are part of the gang with Indian Ted Healy. But Indian Ted Healy's assistant is going over the plan and giving them the money. And he looks totally like the sleazy 80s stereotypical villain. So from now on, I'm going to refer to him as Indian 80s stereotypical sleazy villain. That's a mouthful. So I might not (laughs) refer him that way every time. But... Yeah, so they talk and say things, but apparently I'm going to guess that the plan is in action. They've been paid. They'll probably get the rest of the payment upon delivery of the baby. And very sinister music's playing. So I can't wait till this becomes a wacky comedy adventure where baby escapes and just 
goes on wild and wacky adventures, at which point I will start then hitting my head against the wall. But I might not, because you know what? This film has earned a lot of goodwill with me right now, at least so far. I mean, at least for that first half hour. Second half hour hasn't been as great, but it still has some goodwill with me. Big song and dance number in celebration of something, I guess. But everyone looks happy, including Baby. And even though I keep calling him Baby, he's like five years old or something. The Stooges are at a seedy bar, and they're discussing their plans, I guess. Um, Because I don't know what any of them are saying. So it gets kind of boring for me when I don't know what's going on, when people are just talking. And they're talking seriously, not like super animated silliness so bleh, 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 bleh. then it's the next day and i'm looks like their plans in action because there's a fire at mean girl's house like a big full-on like their garage or something is burning down and the fire department comes the fire truck but it's the stooges disguised as firefighters which I gotta say, this plan seems a lot more complicated than the fake photographers that the first two Baby Day, Baby's Day Out films did. Um, like, A, where do you get a fire truck? B, where do you get the fire, like, outfits? C, how do you intercept the call to the fire department? D, at some point you're gonna have to fight the fire, right? Or are you just gonna let that shit burn and kidnap the baby and just flip off Mean Girl on the way out like, fuck you! Ha ha ha! Mean Girl doesn't seem to realize anything's amiss with these uh, fake firefighters, considering that, you know, two of them just kind of ran off, and the one that left, the one that's still there, is pointing the hose at a part of the house that's not on fire, and then he makes her hold the hose. Like, at some point, like, don't you go, like, wait a minute, what the fuck is wrong with these firefighters? Or is that something that's the norm in India? So maybe she didn't think it's out of that strange, out of the normal, normal, because that's just what happens at fires in India, is sometimes you have to help the firefighters. You know, the gods help those who help themselves, so such is the way of the Indian firefighters. But they manage to kidnap Baby, and they're off. And throw away their fake firefighter clothes, and go into the car that they had stashed away, their getaway car. Um, so I don't know, I guess they're just going to leave the fake fire truck. A little bit later, as everyone's just sitting around, all upset because Baby's missing, sleazy Indian 80s stereotype villain calls... And lets them know that he's the kidnapper. And he gives his terms, his demands. I'm not exactly sure what those demands were, but they only have one hour to meet them. Because it's so important, he had to tell us in English, one hour. So, they will have to try to figure out a way to meet these demands in one hour. What those demands are, I don't know. We then get into your typical Baby's Day Out territory, as the Stooges are trying to figure out, how do we take care of a baby? We don't know! We've never done it. But they realize that if they just hit each other very hard with all sorts of slapstick, well then, Baby laughs. And then one of the Stooges is sent to the liquor store, I think, to pick up more liquor. And while he's there, he realizes that the liquor store has a phone. So he pays the clerk off so that he can use the phone, which he uses to call Mean Girl, and says some stuff to her, and I'm not sure what it is, but it really upsets her very much, and she starts crying in the arms of Indian Fonz. The Stooge comes back from the liquor store with some fresh booze, which they drink, and I guess it lowers their inhibitions, because they start singing to Baby. Just a big song about something. And Baby is just fucking horrified. Like, I thought like it was going to cheer up Baby and that he'd have fun. But no, he's just looking at it like, what the fuck? Stop singing, please. And they do stop singing when they all fall asleep. 
the Stooges all fall asleep. Baby, he does not fall asleep. Because, remember, that's going to be an important part to the Baby's Day Out plot. That, you know, the criminals, the kidnappers fall asleep, which allows Baby to escape and go on his wacky adventures. <clears throat> Grandma's at the temple praying. I assume she's praying for Baby to get back safe. Will the, uh, whichever deity she's praying to. And I apologize to any Indian people that are listening for not being <clears throat> more up on your religion to know who she was praying to. But, so, hopefully that person will hear her prayers and save Baby. Meanwhile, Baby, who's surrounded by sleeping kidnappers, sees a bird and decides to chase after it. Because I guess that's the one of the similarities between American and Indian children is that they see a bird, they got to chase after it. It's another part that's in the DNA of Baby's Day Out. Baby's got to chase a bird. At least this time, Baby goes out through a door and not a window. Because, geez, like... <sighs> Kid going out the window. What the fuck? Do you not care about Eric Clapton's feelings? This, these filmmakers do, because he walked out the door. Still ends up on the roof. That has one of those, like, the glass roof ceilings. So, that possibly baby could fall through, but he won't. So, the Indian stooges wake up from their slumber. All three of them. And somehow, all three of them fail to realize that baby's not around anymore. Don't even think to, hey, let's go look for Baby, because where the fuck did Baby go? Nope, they're just eating, la la la, until Baby, who's up above, like, the sky roof thing, which I still don't know what it's called. But, you know, it's like the thing on top of a roof, and it's got, like, a sky dome thingamajig, which is open, and miraculously, Baby doesn't fall to his death, but he drools. And the drool lands on one of the stooges, and they realize, that's weird, and they look up, there's Baby! Oh no, we must go save Baby! And then we get the exact same hijinks as we've gotten in the other two films. As the original Baby's Day Out and the first Indian remake, we get the same wacky hijinks, where he gets hit in the face with the board, because Baby's walking across it, and they try to jump to the other building, and they fall, um... But they did not have the air conditioner gag where the guy hits his balls on the air conditioner. In fact, I think so far I've not seen any nut shots. And we're like an hour and a half into the film. So I'm holding out hope. Maybe there's no nut shots. Because the filmmakers here, they're tasteful. They don't need nut shots for comedy. They need to blow up a baby in the first 10 minutes. But they don't need nut shots. Indian Fonz runs over to the liquor store where the Stooges had called them from. Because um, I'm not sure if they gave them the address of, hey, we're here, or I'm calling you from this liquor store, or if the call got traced. Um, which is one of the problems when you're watching movies in a language you don't understand, and there's like no subtitles. You kind of have to guess at a lot of things that are happening. But... You know, he gets to the liquor store, and the liquor store clerk tells him something that I'm assuming is, yeah, those assholes live upstairs. Because next thing you know, he's bursting into the apartment where they were at. And he's got a fucking, like, magnum on him. Um, I don't know my guns, but it looks like something that Dirty Harry used, and he was all about the magnums, right? And I don't mean the condoms. Although Indian Fonz might have some magnum condoms in his back pocket. Because he's swinging a fucking magnum between his legs. Oh, Indian Fonz, I am thinking way too much about your dick. But he pulls out his gun because he's ready to shoot any motherfucker so he could save his baby. But neither motherfuckers nor baby are in the apartment. But, you know what? Good for him, at least, for taking, like, initiative... To be chasing these motherfuckers down and being ready to shoot them. Because um, that didn't happen in 
the other two films, um, the other, the first Indian remake, you know, they left it all to the singing mechanic to hunt down their baby. And in the American version, they just didn't do shit. They just sat back and were like, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, what the fuck? This is America. We should have been chasing after the guys with a gun. I mean, otherwise, what's the point of the Constitution? So Baby walks into the temple, and he see- starts eating some food that was left out as an offering, which is probably going to anger the gods, won't it? Um, I don't think things are going to end well for Baby, because he just pissed off the gods by eating their food. I think Baby's going to get blown up. Again, I don't know if, you know, the beginning of this film was a flash forward and letting us know Baby's going to get fucking blown up by the end. And if he does, I guess this is the reason why. Because he fucking stole the offerings to the gods. Meanwhile, the Indian stooges, they see that baby's in the temple, and they're like, all right, let's go get him. But they accidentally bump into a woman in the, on the way, and she starts yelling at them, and they start yelling at her, and suddenly this large group of people just all gather around, and they all just start smacking the shit out of the stooges. It's sort of like when... Uh, They realized Richard Ramirez was on the streets and just the whole, like, neighborhood just gang together beat the shit out of him. It was kind of like that. But they're so crazy that in the way it only can happen in wacky movies, the Stooges manage to get out of the crowd, but the crowd continues just, I guess, smacking air or whatever because they're just too caught up in the moment. They don't want to stop the motions. Baby ends up stumbling onto a film set where they're making some sort of movie about, like, a sultan or something, and all these guys got, like, these big giant swords, and the PA picks up Baby because, I don't know, doesn't seem like he's concerned that there's a random baby just walking about. He seems excited, happy. I think they're just going to force him into slave labor or something. They're going to use him on the film because they're like, yeah, fuck this. We need the... Because there's some other kid in the film that's being made so they're probably like well we need a stunt double and we just have a random baby here which again five-year-old kid is being considered a baby here (coughs) and then the stooges see them and so they run after and they grab baby and there's more yelling and arguing and i'm not sure what's being said but the guys that are playing soldiers they come upon and they're gonna fight the Stooges and attack, but they all have rubber swords. And I'll admit, I laughed at it. I it tickled my funny bone. And once the Stooges realize, like, oh, these are just fake rubber swords, they start fighting back. And then we get some like Keystone type comedy with everything like going on in like super fast motion. And Baby manages to walk away again. Indian sleazy 80s stereotypical villain. He's uh, yelling at something and showing pictures of the Stooges and the baby. So I guess he's not happy. I don't know if he's, like, because he's talking to some other guy, so I don't know if he's putting a hit on the Stooges to be like, these guys fucked up, killed them, get the baby. Or he's just saying these guys need help because they're fuck-ups, get the baby, or kill the baby. I don't know. He, but he's not happy. Meanwhile, Indian Fonz, he's yelling at someone on the phone, and he's just really super angry and pissed. I don't know who he's yelling at or what he's yelling, but he's just super pissed, and he gets into the police car, but not before Baby, who just happens to be so close, sees him. And he starts walking after the police car, even though the police car is super fast and just leaves him in the dust. But, again, this has happened in all the films where Baby is so close and sees his parents and just, oh, they miss it. But as he's walking down the street, on the road, this is more a road than a street, there's a runaway bus, and I think their brakes aren't working or something, and they just can't stop at all, and they're yelling... To everyone, get out of the way. But Baby, he doesn't hear them and doesn't understand. 
And normally I would be like, eh, you know, there's not really that much tension because what they're going to do, run over a baby? Then I remembered. Yes, this movie started off with blowing up a kid. So yeah, there is the possibility that they'll just fucking run this kid over. So there was some tension for me. Like, how are they going to get out of this? But luckily the monkey was nearby and saw what was about to happen. So the monkey jumps into action and holds baby down enough so that the bus just drives right over them without hitting them. Um, Is this possible? Because this is another thing that's happened in, like, all these Baby's Day Out films. And I don't know if, like, you're just small enough, you can just lay down and the car will go over you with no trouble. I feel like that can't happen. I feel like there's enough stuff underneath the car to fucking take your head off if the car's going fast enough, even if you're laying completely still on the ground. I don't know. I don't know the physics of this. If there's any physicists out there listening, um, stop listening and go back to your physicisting, because that's way more important. Baby sees a statue of a woman holding her child, and it makes him very sad because he misses his mom, so he starts crying. And all the way across town, his mom, she f- feels it or somehow. Her heart is aching. She feels that her son is crying out for her. So she's sad. So she starts singing a song about something. I'm guessing about sadness and children. Um, kind of a weak song. I don't know. I, I like the songs better where there's like a lot of dancing going on. And this wasn't a very dancing song. Um... But meanwhile, Monkey, who has clothes. So I don't know at what point he got clothes. Did I just not notice it <laughs> when he saved Baby or when he was driving the car or when he got to the park? But he has clothes now. And he, he figures, well, Baby's probably hungry. So he steals a bottle of milk from another family in the park because he's just like, fuck it, I'm a monkey. Um, which I hear is a common problem, like, in that area, isn't it? Like, in India and Thailand and all those places that monkeys will just fucking steal shit from you because they're fucking monkeys and they've just... I I blame the lack of education system. They've just had poor upbringings. But, yeah, the monkey steals the bottle and he comes. But, oh, no, he's lost baby. So, Indian Stooges, don't feel so bad about the fact that you've lost baby so many times because... Not even a monkey can keep track of this baby. So baby's off walking in the park, and the Stooges find him, and they pick him up, and it's like, all right, we've got him, we win. But there's some police officers coming by. They're looking for a baby. So they got to think quick. What can we do? I know. Let's sit on this bench, and we'll put a jacket over baby so the police can't see him, and... Yes, it is that scene that they have to do as part of a, you know, you can't do a Baby's Day remake without including this scene where Baby sets the guy's balls on fire. And if you thought it was funny the first time, you'll think it's funny now. If you thought it was stupid the first time, you'll think it's stupid now. But yeah. So, yeah, we get the whole, like, Trying to play it cool while my balls are on fire so the police don't suspect anything. And, you know, I thought this movie was going to be above this, but no. Nut shots, as the other Stooges figure, the only way to put someone's balls out when they're on fire is to stomp on the balls. So, we got it again. That is just part of Baby's Day Out DNA, is that there needs to be nut shots. The Stooges follow the baby to a carnival where baby has gotten onto a Ferris wheel. He's sharing a car with two guys, which I got to say, I don't trust these two guys because baby gets into the Ferris wheel car with you. Again, five-year-old kid, but still. And you don't go, who the fuck are you? Why is there this little kid? Someone 
take care of him. His parents must be missing. No, they're like, ah, whatever. We want to ride the Ferris wheel. So then the Stooges, their brilliant plan is to, well, we'll get on the Ferris wheel as well. So not well thought out. Like, what do you fuck do you think you're going to do? Jump from your Ferris wheel car to the other one? Like, obviously, the super stupid, easy solution would have just been to stand there and wait till his car came and he was getting off and booyah. And, you know, no one's going to worry about you random people picking up this child because no one was worried that the other two random people were in the car with the child and no one fucking cares You know, you're killing all the goodwill you had from me from the first half of this film. Just, ugh, why? Why? Just, I I can't take it. I just... I just want to see someone murdered again. I hope this film comes full circle and someone just dies. The Stooges are then apprehended by some henchmen with big guns. Henchmen of... Indian stereotypical 80s cocaine action film villain. Um, honestly, I, could, I, I like him. He is seriously like every 80s action film that generally dealt with like an evil drug cartel. He's this guy. He's fabulous. You, you just get the presence of, man, this guy is going to fuck some shit up. But... He's not going to actually fight himself until the very end when he has to. And you're surprised like, oh my god, this guy's got fucking awesome fight moves. That's this guy. And, you know, he's mad at the Stooges because, you know, they've just fucked things up royally. But luckily one of his other henchmen got the baby. No issues. Super easy. Because, you know, Stooges, you could have done it. It could have been just so fucking easy, apparently. But you just went and fucked everything up. So now, evil villain, he calls the grandpa. Um, Well, the grandpa answers because Indian Fonz and Mean Girl are still just too distraught to, like, talk on the phone. And I'm guessing he's giving his demands and there's some more. Grandpa yells, but not 80s villain because he is cool as a cucumber. Because that's the other thing with these stereotypical 80s villains. They're just so in fucking charge. that They don't have to raise their voice even if someone's yelling at them. Because that is true power. They're like, yeah, fuck you because I've got the power. I've got the cocaine. I've got the women. That's how it goes. And so, um... And by the way, like, he thought that the henchman that got the baby did a very good job because he did say in English, good job. And again, every time they say something in English, they're just emphasizing the point, I guess. So the henchman did a good job, and now some demands were sent, and all I understood was Justice Center. So I'm guessing the Justice Center is where the whole trade-off is going to go down. Mean Girl is upset at her dad. I'm not sure why, maybe... He's refusing to pay the ransom or something. She's just very, very upset. And he's kind of like, nah, I don't give a fuck. So, Iron Fonzie. Iron Fonzie? That'd be kind of cool. Indian Fonzie jumps into action. And he heads down to jail and just starts beating the shit out of a guy. And I think it's, I think it's Indian Ted Healy. The guy from the trial at all the way back at the beginning of the movie. Remember? The guy that fucking killed a child blew him up nonetheless so i'm all for him getting beat up but this is just i don't know he's i guess he's probably trying to get him to speak and he's just going full force with his punches then um 80s stereotypical villain guy calls again and this time mean girl picks up and i think he probably was like what the fuck are you? Why aren't you paying my ransom? Ah, I'm going to kill the kid or something. And she's just very upset and she's crying. And then we cut back to the prison again. And this time, Indian Fonz is just beating the shit out of him with a stick. He's just, like, going to town. This is like he's fucking torturing him and shit. Like, 
This kind of violence was not in the American version of Baby's Day Out. Because John Hughes is a pussy. And didn't dare take that film to the places it should have gone. Which included just fucking wanton beating up very violently pieces of shit. Um, So this film has started winning me over again. But then Indian Fonz has to leave because he's called away from by his wife to go somewhere. Um, I don't know. Just remember, I don't speak this language, so I have no fucking clue on the subtleties of what's going on. But he runs out of there, and she runs into the prison. Manages to steal a gun, because the prison guards are just fucking, like, inept. And I guess only one of them has a gun. I mean, I don't know why the rest of them didn't, like, pull out their guns on her. And she frees Indian Ted Healy. I don't know if they're in cahoots together, or she just figures he's her best chance of getting baby back. My baby back, baby back, baby back. Yeah, I went there. Whatever. What was, where, was, where was I going with this? Yeah, so she frees Indian Ted Healy, and they're off. Because probably he knows where to find baby. The Stooges are all tied up. And they're just bemoaning their fate and probably saying, like, oh, what can we do? How do we get out of here? Luckily, the henchman who's currently assigned to watching Baby falls asleep. Because for some reason, people fall asleep around Baby, even though, you know, they're tasked with guarding him. And so Baby just walks out of the room, walks over into the room where the Stooges are tied up. And he rescues them by lighting the rope on fire. Um, this kid's a fucking pyromaniac. First he lit the guy's balls on fire, but he makes up for it by saving them by lighting the rope on fire. This kid should not be playing with lighters, is all I'm saying. Mean Girl and Indian Ted Healy. It's kind of funny to keep calling him Indian Ted Healy, because he's absolutely nothing like Ted Healy. And people listening are probably like, Ted Healy, is he like... A character from 80s action films known for a certain type of role? No. But they arrive at the warehouse. And I'm guessing the ransom was that they had to free him. So she shows up with him. So, you know, she's going to get Baby back. And they go to the prisoner room. But, oh no, Baby's not there. What happened? Where did he go? And that's when the Stooges pop out. And they're all like, ha 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 ha. We pulled one over on you. We outwitted you. We are smarter. I imagine that's what they were saying. Something to that effect. They just kept laughing. And they had Baby in tow. But uh, Ted Healy offered them a briefcase full of money to get the Baby back. Because, I don't know, I guess Baby is more valuable than the amount of money in that briefcase they could probably like get like three four times the amount of money of ransom by withholding baby plus if you're also withholding the mom that's going to just sweeten the pot so yeah i i guess it probably would be worth whatever amount of money is in that briefcase to be able to have baby and mom but you know so they start walking towards and they're about to hand baby over but then they kick him in the balls instead, because, remember, nut shots. Nut shots are the foundation of Baby's Day Out. And they take the money without having to give over the baby, and not only that, they managed to take the big machine gun that Ted Healy was holding, and they're all like, ha ha ha, we've gotten one over on you. But then they get distracted because Mom's so happy and playing with Baby that, ha ha ha, Ted Healy gets the gun back, and they take Baby away. Then Baby kicks Indian Ted Healy in the balls, because, of course, that's what Baby does. <sighs> so many nut shots, so little time. But then there's a big fracas. They fight. Big fight scene that's equal parts kung fu and slapstick, which makes Baby just laugh. Hysterically, because Baby is very much about violence. 
Baby loves violence. And don't we all? Violence is very funny. And it's just a big mess, and there's oil slicks, and the monkey fucking comes out to grab a gun and threatens to shoot everyone. Which I was really hoping for the monkey to just go and just mow mow down some people, but no, monkey gets taken out, and... I want I keep wanting to call him Iron Fonz. I don't know why. Indian Fonz shows up with a gun and the police. And in the ensuing fracas of this one, Ted Healy runs off with the baby. Will they be able to catch him in time? And then Indian Fonz catches up with Ted Healy. And Indian Ted Healy thinks, Oh, well, you can't shoot me because I've got your baby in my arms. And Indian Fonz is like, yeah, watch me, and he shoots him in the leg, which makes him drop baby, and more really a toss of baby. This baby goes flying in the air, and oh no, he's gonna be injured and die, and you know what, I'm still, like, on edge, because remember, this film killed a child in, like, the first ten minutes, so I wouldn't put it past it to kill another child in the last ten minutes. But it doesn't. Because Monkey shows up out of nowhere to save the day once again. And he catches Baby. And I fucking love Monkey. I love Monkey more than I love Man in Gorilla Suit. Just, I love this Monkey. Which allows Indian Fonz to be free enough to just kick the shit out of Indian Ted Healy. And it's actually a pretty sweet uh, fight. It's It's a good action fight. Um, sound effects of this whole film have just been ridiculous, with every hit just being like, boom, 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 but I dug it, I, I, I'm just really into this, and he's kicking the shit out of him, and then he picks up a rock, and he's about to smash Indian Ted Healy's face in, but he stopped because the police have arrived, and they tell him, like, don't do it, don't do it, and so he decides, okay, I will not cross that barrier of killing a man, and... Mom is there, and she's reunited with Baby, and they are happy. And the Stooges come along, and they start saying a bunch of stuff, and they apologize to the monkey, and the monkey forgives them. Um, I'm not quite sure if at some point they also apologize to the parents. (laughs) Um, I guess they don't matter as much as the monkey, because you don't want a fucking monkey pissed off at you. You want to make sure you're in the monkey's good graces. So, and they start to walk away, and Baby cries because Baby misses them. So, the Stooges, they start singing a song. Unfortunately, no dance number to go along with it because then it goes straight into the credits while the song is still playing. Um, Could have done with a song and dance number to end it, and it would have been, like, the perfect film. Yeah, that was... um, that film. Um. Jeez, what the fuck was it called? How did I already forget? And I blacked, I went out of it, so. Now let me get back to it. Ek Pool Teen Conte. Which, which definitely was something. Um, I feel like the filmmakers were tasked with making a Baby's Day remake because the original did so well and the first remake did so well that some other studio was like, you know, we got to catch in on Baby's Day Out Fever. So you guys make a remake. And the filmmakers watched the original to figure out how they were going to remake it. And they were like, what the fuck? This is the shittiest film we've ever seen. You know what? Fuck that. We're taking the money and we're making an ode to 80s action films. And they did. And it was fabulous. Just amazing. They were proud. They handed the film in and the producers were like, What the fuck? This is nothing like Baby's Day Out. Here's here's a little more money. If you want this film released, you film some Baby's Day Out scenes. And so they did. They... remade some of the scenes and just tossed them in the middle of the film going, ah, we don't care if it really even fits in because the rest of our film is fucking awesome. And you know what? They are right. Like, take out those Baby's Day 
out remake scenes, and this is actually a pretty awesome film. Even though I understood absolutely fuck all of it. <laughs> I... I don't... So I don't know the intricacies of the plot, but... I think I was able to figure it out for the most part. So it was a fun film. Uh, so, of the Baby's Day Out franchise, because um, I'm considering these remakes part of the franchise, dear God, imagine if there really was a Baby's Day Out franchise. But out of these films, this one is by a wide mile the best one so far. It was just fucking fantastic. So, next week we will watch what is hopefully the final Indian remake of Baby's Day Out. I don't know, because I've Googled it, and there was rumors this year of possibly remaking it once again, but it seems like it was built off an April Fool's Day, but people really want it, and so if it, they really want it, it might happen, and dear Lord, please do not let there be yet another Baby's Day remake. Unless it's as fucking awesome as this one was. Because this one was pretty fucking awesome, I'll say. Uh, VelvetAl at Hotmail.com or leave a message on the YouTube page. Leave a comment um, if you want to tell me fuck off or if you want to pitch your own idea for a Baby's Day remake. Um, yeah, we'll get on this.